The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel starts its second season soon, and I'm glad. The show's a requiem for the maligned Jewish mother. It's a mystery why fine Jewish writers like the late Philip Roth often had bottomless compassion for their dads, but almost none for their moms. Maybe because in the stereotypical division of labor in the mid-20th century, dads weren't there much and moms always were. Morning, Ethan. 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 E oh, never mind. So there was a vast blank space to project admirable qualities onto dad. When he came home, it was like the return of the prodigal father. Some of those moms, as I recall them, could have easily run global corporations or governments, except they had to stay home to fill their roles. Eventually, when the kids left, they were allowed to go to work. My mother went that route. Some of them could be savagely funny about their plight, and Mrs. Maisel takes her reaction downtown, from her Upper West Side New York apartment to Greenwich Village comedy clubs. Clearly, the patterns extend beyond those years and Jewish families. Barack Obama wrote a memoir about his absent dad. Years later, he wondered if he should have written a different book, not about his dad, but about the mom who was the sole constant in my life. Obsession will always be with us, but it'd be nice if sometimes we could make better obsessive choices. Rachel Brosnahan, who plays Mrs. Maisel, isn't Jewish herself, and I think it works for her. It gives her a very slight, nearly imperceptible distance from the part that allows us to observe her more and identify with her less. Like Bertolt Brecht's famous alienation effect. For the Toronto Star, I'm Rick Salutin.